Welcome to Marty's Bench. Tonight I'm tying a pattern for a trip to the Bighorn. This is a, yeah, it's kind of a meld between the Autumn Splendor and the JJ Special. So I've been calling it a JJ Splendor. It's on a size 6 hook. I've already got one prepared with a quarter inch copper cone. And I'm going to use 140 denier thread. Body's brown, so I chose a brown thread. Now I've got a couple of colors of marabou, and I have a tendency to make these things too long, so I'm going to be a little more careful with the proportions here just for good practice. See the length of this once you get to the tie in point above the barb. It's going to be about the same as the hook shank, but no more. Now, usually you tie in two colors of marabou and then some flash on either side, but that flash just kind of gets melted in with the marabou anyway, so I'm going to put it in in between. Just get a couple of strands of copper. And let that distribute itself around the hook. I yeah, hope I didn't lose my focus there. And I'm going to trim it just a little bit longer than the marabou. Now I've got a brown. And you can see that I've prepared this by getting rid of all of the short fibers. So these are all the same length. And measure that so it's the same length as the yellow. That shows me where to cut it. Tied in with a couple of turns, and before I get any more, I'm going to stroke those back and see if they're even. That's perfect. And here I am at the tying point above the barb. I like to put a couple of turns. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going two turns around both bundles of marabou. That stands it up a little bit and will kind of discourage it from fouling. The shortness of the tail will also help discourage fouling, so that's another reason to keep your proportions neat on this. Now for rubber legs, I've got Montana Fly Centipede legs, speckled yellow. And these strands, individual strands, are six inches long. So I'll take the bundle and cut a little over two inches off. And that will give me a stack of these rubber legs that are all just the right length. Now I'm going to tie, tie it in on my side, but then I'm going to reach and stretch across the top and just really bite in with that thread. And if I need to, I can make one pass across the rubber here on the hook and then move forward halfway between those legs in the cone. Now I put about 12 turns of 030 lead behind those and cemented them in. And if you use the same number of turns each time, you can use that as an index point as to where to put your rear legs. And then your fifth booger will look just like your first. So now here I'm about halfway up. I tied that in so that these two are about the same length. Now when I reach across, and tie it in. All four of those are going to be about the same length. If I have to, I can trim them a little bit. Now, here's where it differs from a JJ Special. I'm going to use a Grizzly dyed brown instead of a Grizzly. JJ Special's also got a yellow belly tied in with a strap of yellow chenille. And I dispensed with that for this one. So there's a feather from a whiting booger pack. These have been have been very good for boogers. Uh, got some brown chenille. And I'm going to reverse hackle this. That's why I'm tying everything in at the front. Get a couple of good hard turns. Fold the chenille forward. 
Now I'm going to move my thread in between the legs. Until I get to the back. Now I'm going to make that first turn right up tight against the cone. That's what makes for a good looking woolly booger. And then each turn I go to the back. It'll be fairly tight against the previous one. And I'm going to have to wind it around the legs. They're still spread out well. Now when I get to the back, just a couple of turns, but don't trim this yet, because if something bad happens, you got a long ways to back up to salvage this one. Now I'm going to make a couple of turns by hand right behind the cone. And now that I've got it started, you see how the cone kind of pushed those fibers towards the back? We like that. Now I'll grab it with hackle pliers for the rest of the turns. Just jump it up onto the chenille. And when I get to the back, I'm going to grab that feather right by the tip so that I can catch the stem rather than bind down any fibers. Now I'm just going to bring my thread through with four or five turns until I get to the cone. Look how neat that is up at the front. Now I can whip finish and since this whip finish isn't holding anything down I don't worry about head cement. I will tie a couple of whip finishes and you see those slide down and there's just no gap between the cone and the fly. Now I can trim the chenille at the back. Take one last look at my legs, see if they're perfectly even. And there's my JJ Splendor.